Hello, my incisive friends. Welcome back to Alien Protocols. You are obviously a very keen observer, very inquisitive person about the fundamental nature of reality, and I am very humbled by your presence. This episode is going to dive into some really cool ancient UFO sightings. And it's conceivable some could be meteorological or cos, you know, cosmological possibility, could be natural, you know, geological phenomena, perhaps. But I took out the ones that even had a possibility of being, um, you know, a more obvious case. Some of them would explode in the air and the ground shook. Things like that would happen, and I attribute that to. Uh, you know, a comet or a meteor, even if it took place over several days because of the possibility that that could happen with this stretched out meteor like the Shoemaker Levy that crashed into Jupiter. So I tried to pick some of the best ones and some of these are just cool. I've never heard of uh, most of these. And um, I've always been curious about the legitimacy of the older, how, how long has this interaction been happening? And we're going to dive in and find out for ourselves, my friends. So the first one is uh, the oldest one. And I'll just start from the oldest to newer cases. Um, this is from an Egyptian papyrus. It's the Thule papyrus. And um, it uh, talks about uh, Pharaoh Tut Moses III. That's what the papyrus is all about. And he reigned from around... Um, like 18, uh, 1504 BC to uh, 1450 BC. Uh, he had a sighting described as a circle of fire that came out of the sky. It emitted bad breath. Oh, excuse me. It, it emitted bad breath, but had no head. It was one rod long and one rod wide. I'm not certain if that is a square or a circle. Um, this was such a big event that uh, scribes and uh, the royal uh, group, um, the royal court, all meditated over this event. And um, the next day, the same thing happened. And the third day, they were more numerous than ever. Um, there were these fire circles diving in and out of the clouds. Uh, incense was burned, and the pharaoh said that this um, great event um, needs to be marked down into history. Um, very interesting one. Uh, uh, the mentions of it um, going back and forth and in and out of the clouds uh, kind of makes it a little um, uh, tough to say it was a meteorite. It seems very interesting in that it was called Servals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, we have 343 BC, and this is uh, according to the writings of uh, Dodorius Timulin. And he um, had in a, an amazing series of events that uh, started when he was alone and then went into the city. He was traveling to Sicily from Corinth, and bright lights, or lamps, you would call them, were guiding him. They came from the sky, and uh, they guided him at night, and kind of like uh, the classic Moses story. And they would flame up in the early evening and fly to <laughs> like his area, I guess, not too far off the ground. And um, he was preceded by blazing torches in the sky above him. Um, he made it all the way to the harbor of Italy, and as he went into the city, they would follow him in and out of the streets. And uh, that's really, really interesting. And another super interesting thing about it is he claims to have had um, contact with them. And they gave him... Um, uh, information about the future. And uh, it's very interesting, you know, he's a historian, 
uh, he got information about the future uh, from UFOs. Uh, it's almost kind of like an abdu abduction case or a download case, or um, it's got, it kind of straddles. And it's one of these cases I really want to explore further um, because it seems so close to him. Another series of cases, this is really interesting too, in the Punic Wars in 216 to 201 BC, there were many sightings of strange aerial phenomena. Um, uh, Anellus Maximi uh, told about a bunch of these uh, sightings, which were golden ships in the sky coming in and out of the clouds. Uh, another one. Uh, two years later came a similar sighting of gleaming round shields traveling through the air. They were met by ships and fled. Um, this was seen by thousands and thousands. Um, another uh, series of sightings that had tremendous uh, witnesses all over the country is another one from Italy. This is 122 BC. And uh, there, were, there was a sighting of three moons. And this was, I think, originally in Armenia, in Italy. And the objects were visible during the day and they were visible at night. And Pliny the Elder wrote about these, um, saying, quote, Three moons have appeared at once in the town of Denius, Dumidius, and Gaius Ennius. Um, numerous writings spoke about this from different um, uh, historians. Um, in the book one of Roman history uh, is a separate writing about these three moons. And it says, at Armimium, a bright light like the day blazed out of the night and three moons became visible. They moved in many parts of the sky and at times shining lights to the ground. <laughs> Interesting, and this was over numerous cities. Uh, Italy seemed to be very hot at that period of time, too. At uh, 98 BC, Cassius Dio, another historian, wrote about a fine rain resembling silver. It fell all over the city of Rome, although there was no clouds in the sky. It was a bright, sunny day. And that... Um, it had a uh, residue, I guess they call it a residue, um, fell over. Uh, blah, blah. Oh, Cassius also writes that he didn't see it falling, but he came upon it on the ground all over the place. And he took some coins, his bronze coins, and collected up this stuff to study it. And he studied it and said that uh, it remained for three days, but they had all disappeared by the fourth day as he was working, uh, I guess, on experiments with them. This is a bizarre, another one from Rome. This is 18, oh, excuse me, 12 BC, a strange comet-like object hovered over Rome for several days, and then it melted into what uh, witnesses described as uh, flashes of lights similar to uh, fireflies and torches. So I guess maybe there were two different sizes there. Um, in uh, AD 80, now we'll jump to AD 70, um, Josephus, according to his account, um, he had a very bizarre um, experience. And then it started happening again and again and became uh, very well recorded uh, across Italy. Uh, he says that he saw chariots and troops of soldiers in their armor running around amongst the clouds. He called it uh, a miraculous phenomena, basically, beyond belief. And there were a bunch of witnesses, and um, uh, Josephus was hesitant to recount. This is a wonderful aspect because it's very much how people feel about nowadays. Nothing has changed in 2000 years. He was uh, worried about telling 
others who had not seen this event um, about it because he uh, thought it would be deemed a fable <laughs> or a result of illness. Um, it's, it's really amazing that this kept happening for uh, around two weeks and uh, others wrote about it, calling it armed battalions battling in the skies. Um, a great noise rang down from above, causing quakes on the ground, according to historian Tacticus. And the sky was filled with armies in combat, glittering armor. And really a bizarre and amazing one. You know, that's one of those where you hear, when you hear like a thunder on the ground or quakes on the ground, you think, I think of that Russian um, meteor that exploded in the sky. And they really specifically talked about multiple different witnesses seeing these chariots and troops of soldiers in armor fighting in the sky. That armor also makes me think of metal, reflective metal and stuff. This is a really weird one. Um, the brother of Pope Pius I, and this is in AD 180, and um, once again in Italy, in Campania, Italy, he saw descending toward him an object uh, he described as the beast. Um, it descended downward toward him. It was in the shape and color of a piece of pottery. Now, the color, I don't, I don't know what they mean by that, except for the raw color. But he also continues and says, on the top of it, it had a top with multiple colors which shot out fiery rays. Here's where it gets even wilder. The object landed on the ground, causing clouds of dust to appear. When they cleared, a maiden clad in white was visible next to the object. She smiled apparently and descended into the sky, joining the pottery shape once again. Very bizarre case. It reminds me of the classic lady in white stuff. Um, these cases are, of course, not just in Italy. They're all over the world. In China, China had a bunch of them. Uh, famous Chinese astronomer Shin Ko in the 11th century described flying objects um, in different cities and uh, throughout China. And it happened so much um, in the time of Emperor Zhao that the name for it, they, gave, they named these uh, aerial things they called them pearls. Pearls, very interesting description, circular shiny. Um, uh, here's one of the incidents in Jiangshai province during the reign of Emperor Zhao. Um, at night, local residents saw glowing circles emerging under the water from Lake Zhangkai. Very interesting. Emerging from the lake, that sounds like at least... Uh, a little bit of transmedia uh, characteristics. Uh, in the sky over Yanshu, uh, a strange object was seen that uh, emerged from a different lake, um, Zenga, at night, and then plunged back into the waters again. It is a pearl. Very bizarre. Um, this uh, pearl is, is spoken about over quite a few years and over broad uh, area. There must have been a lot of interactions. Um, um, what else? So um, there's also uh, an interesting story. I, I, I've never heard this one. Um, when the Franks were battling the Saxons, um, they were in the middle of... Uh, we were just about to start a, a battle one morning, and an object appeared in the skies. It had the likeness of two flaming shields, reddish in color. They floated in the skies above the Saxons. It, the, it would brighten in fiery succession until the Saxon army uh, turned around and fled. And this is according to the uh, Annals Lorenes Motoris, the Latin Annals of History, um, that uh, talk about that region. And they, it speaks very clearly about this 
object that flew above them and had these fiery pulses that scared away the Saxons. Um, pretty extraordinary. And here we dive into another very extraordinary case. This is uh, the 1815 Magonia, like Jacques Vallée's passport to Magonia. Um, this was in uh, 1816 in Lyon, France. There's a guy named Agobard, and he wrote prolifically of his experiences with Magonia. And Magonia is a, a uh, realm in the clouds. And this is where it gets very, very interesting. Uh, realm in the clouds where aerial sailors and their airborne ships reside and sometimes come here. Um, he spoke much about this relationship, about riding the ships, about the sailors, their clothing being different, their ships being completely different. It was in the clouds and uh, a, a dark sea. You know, I think that's obviously space. Um, and at some point, three men and a woman fell from one of these aerial ships. And they were set upon by a group of townsfolk, apparently. Um, and uh, Agobard uh, intervened and uh, then uh, the sky sailors were permitted to leave when a colossal Magonian ship landed. Uh, I don't know if landed was the exact term, but it was uh, a colossal Magonian ship uh, was like apparently on the ground. Um, Christopher Columbus, 1492. This is extraordinary. This is like changing history. He was on the deck of the Santa Maria, October 11th, 1492, in a glimmering light. Kept appearing and calling to him. He called for Pedro Gutierrez, who also saw the light, and then it would vanish and reappear throughout the night, moving up and down in sudden and passing gleams. Um, Columbus said that these mysterious lights were a sign that they would find land. Four hours later, they did. And it was in the direction of the lights. Very interesting. Marcel France, um, in 1608, a spacecraft was seen flying erratically. The craft stopped in midair. Two beings got out and seemed to battle. The same incident basically happened over Nice. One week later, and a week after that, a few miles away in Genoa. That is extraordinary. When you hear about a craft and stopped in midair and two beings got out and seemed to battle, that could be the drones, uh, of course. Famous astronomer Sir Edmund Haley in 1676 saw a glowing ship floating a glowing ship or floating village. It appeared in the sky and came towards him, stopping directly above him. This is the famous astronomer Edmund Haley. He described it as having a vast body bigger than the moon. The object was about, he thought, 64 kilometers above him, 41 miles. He said that it made a noise like the rattling of a great cart over stones. Isn't that bizarre? It moved and started moving different directions. And at one point, uh, Sir Edmund Haley decided to try and calculate its speed. So he watched it, depending on the speed away from him, for several minutes, and he calculated that it was moving 15,500 kilometers per hour, or 9,600 miles per hour. Absolutely extraordinary, Sir Edmund Haley, the famous one. Um, here is a really interesting one from Windsor Castle. Four witnesses saw this uh, a luminous uh, oblong shape. Um, and these people were four witnesses for, from a uh, royal society, and the oblong shape turned into an oblong cloud that moved more or less parallel to the horizon under the clouds over the clouds it could be seen as a luminous object which became spherical brilliantly lit came to a halt 
split into two. The two had pale blue light in color, and then his luminosity increased, and they both set off again towards the east. Um, it says again, like two days later, the object reappeared and repeated basically the same extraordinary events. Now, when I was researching this one, there was a lot of different witnesses. Uh, people thought that these four witnesses from this Royal Society were drunk, or there was, you know, a lot of joking about them, but the, this case is actually a lot more involved, seen by a lot of people. And uh, that uh, oblong shape that turned into a sphere kept happening. So, very interesting. And uh, finally, in 1909, in New England, and it's important to realize that during this time, there were no airships in New Zealand, like blimps. There were no Zeppelin companies. But for about a month during the winter of 1909, New Zealanders um, reported seeing airships of all sorts of different sizes. They came in from all parts of the country, and the airships were seen in the middle of the night, in the middle of the day. Some were calling them phantom ships. And um, some saw them on the ground and tried to approach, and they left quickly. Very interesting. Um, you know, an airship can go to the ground, or someone could have been building them. But the fact that one had landed and they tried to approach and disappear quickly, very, very bizarre case. And I hadn't heard of most of these. Let's say half of them are meteorological or natural. If the others are real, then this proves a very, very long interaction. What do you guys think? Much love.